Ed and I have prepared two songs for you today, and uh, we're going to do the first one now, and then you get a you know, real treat, we'll do the second one later on. And we actually uh, wrote words to this song. It's a David Mallet song called Inch by Inch, Row by Row, you all know it, but we made up words. So, metaphorically speaking, it's going to be loaded with those, so listen. <laughs> One, two, inch by inch, row by row, we're gonna make this garden grow. Gonna mulch it deep and low, gonna make its fertile ground. Inch by inch, row by row, please bless these seeds I sow. Please keep them safe below till the rain comes tumbling down. Pulling weeds and picking stones, but we are made of dreams and hopes. We need a place to call my own, cause the time is close at hand. Rain for rain, sun and rain, find my way in nature's chain. To my body and my brain, to the music of the land. Inch by inch, nail by screw, we're gonna see this project through. Draw a breath for me and you, so our song will sing on you. Inch by inch, room by room, gonna make the old feel new. To our mission will be true, we're the hands and love is the glue. Plant our faith straight and long, seasoned with a prayer and song. Together we'll continue strong, surrounded by God's care. In this time without a home, we're still the church wherever we roam. When we're back inside again, we'll share a loud amen. All right, it's an audience participation song. We just sang the last verse, so help us out when we come. We will share a loud amen. Let's um, slow it down, right? So we're going to practice it. We'll share a loud amen. Now we want to hear it. Amen. That's All okay, right. so here we go. Okay, just a minute. One more chance. Last, last line. Dude, this is the real. This is the this is the take. Take two. In the zone. Two. Ready? Go. In this time without a home, we're still a church wherever we roam. But when we're back inside again, we'll share a loud amen. <laughs> Thank you so much to Steve and Ed, as always, uh, giving us a lot of joy and meaning. Thank you guys. Welcome all to this momentous occasion. Special welcome to Senator Pat O'Connor uh, and Selectman Paul Healy and to members of the um, uh, Historic District Commission who are here and others. Uh, employees and leaders of Acela and uh, other other wonderful neighbors and friends. Thank you so much for being here. 170 years ago, a relatively small group of folks decided to form a new spiritual community here in Hingham, centered on the will and the way of Jesus Christ. They chose this spot in the middle of town, in this little island, really, to build their church home. And a beautiful home it is, despite the huge hole in front and the fence. About a hundred years later, the congrega congregation added on, as we can see, to the rear of this building to make room for a growing Sunday school program and youth program. Today we celebrate our present congregation's decision to upgrade our facilities in order to better serve our mission. These improvements will help us to, to worship God, to welcome and to give dignified access to all, to serve our neighbors, to educate our children in the faith, to energize our youth, 
and to celebrate the joys of life together. This renovation will preserve an historic building, yes, but it's really all about the future and our ongoing determination to revitalize our community of faith. This project will help us to be the best church that we can be, to look to a power and a spirit greater than ourselves, and to reach out to welcome and serve our neighbors for years and years to come. Before I hand over the floor to our moderator, Debbie, I want to acknowledge the countless hours that Kathy Blair and her Buildings and Grounds team have put into this project. It's truly impressive. A huge thank you also to Phil Edmondson and the Capital Campaign team as well for raising the funds to pay for this effort. As senior pastor of this beloved church, I am incredibly grateful to all of you. <laughs> Debbie Edmondson, our moderator. Thanks, Pete. Summer is a bountiful season in Hingham. Strawberries, raspberries, tomatoes, cukes from the garden, now's the time. And don't hesitate because we all know summer's short in New England. Virgil wrote that your descendants shall gather your fruit. And he might have been referring to the pear tree Phil and I are coaxing along. But as we prepare to bury this time capsule, I'd like to consider other fruit the fruit of Hingham Congregational Church in 2016 that our descendants will gather. We'll bury items from our daily life and try to paint a picture of our church. We'll think carefully about what tangible goods best represent HCC and tell our story. A sermon of Pete's, a church service bulletin, this year's annual report, a CD of some of HCC's wonderful music, perhaps a work camp t-shirt and some before pictures of the building. What we choose to include defines us. More than the time capsule though, in this building project, we're planting the seeds for the health and well-being of our church for generations to come. Fruit that will be gathered next year and in years to come. What can't be contained or buried though, is the spirit that got us here in the first place the vision and imagination to undertake this project, and the courage of our ancestors to establish this church 169 years ago when they buried a time capsule we have yet to find. We are the descendants harvesting that 1847 fruit, and our descendants will gather our fruit from today. Now I'd like to invite forward Kathy Blair, who is leading us in this project, our Buildings and Grounds Task Force Chair. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, it is just its so exciting to see progress taking place here at our beloved worship home. And I'm privileged to welcome you all to this special event. So we have town leaders, our state represent our state senator, religious leaders are here, community leaders, our church membership, uh, members of the press and more are here and we are very appreciative. This groundbreaking ceremony marks the actual implementation of changes to this beautiful historic building that have been envisioned for a very long time. And I have deep gratitude for all who've helped make this possible. I wanna thank Rev. Pete and Debbie Edmondson, our moderator, uh, Phil Edmondson, capital campaign uh, chairperson, Kate Chanis, our office manager, uh, Sarah Holland, our minister of Christian education, my wonderful building and grounds committee, Raymond Design Associates, our architectural firm, and Acela Construction Company. And we also want to thank Old Ship Church for inviting us to worship in, in their sanctuary while we are um, undergoing our construction. So um, these people, in addition to the community, um, to community members and our entire church family, represent those who've helped make this vision into what will be a reality. And they also helped arrange today's ceremony, so thank you. 
Okay, uh, Pete started with a little history lesson. I'm going to continue that a little bit. Um, the church building was built in 1847. As you heard from Debbie, a time capsule was buried then that we've not located yet. In the late 1800s, electricity was added to the building. And the peace window that you see in the front of the sanctuary, it's a beautiful stained glass window with a dove on it, that was added in the 1800s. A small room in the back of the building, right about here, um, we call it the Marshall Room, was added in 1949. And then this is our Sunday School wing. This was added in 1953. Um, that's three floors of classrooms there. Nothing happened again until 1988 when a capital campaign here at the church raised a half a million dollars for sanctuary improvements. Um, the sanctuary is fortunately still in very good shape, but we will be updating the heating system and adding air conditioning to make the room more comfortable for when we worship there and for when we have weddings there and funerals there and other events in our sanctuary. Um, and then just to complete the history lesson, this office building over here was built in 1910 and acquired by HCC in 1947. It was our parsonage for a while, but was converted in, into our office building in 1973. The important thing, though, is that no building improvements have been made um, really here since the 1950s. We've done virtually nothing to improve or update the building. Um, the building inside was dark, drab, unwelcoming, and the infrastructure was severely aging. So um, even though our project started as a much smaller project, we sort of wanted a more of a facelift and aesthetic improvements with the goal to become more welcoming. Once we understood that the building was severely aging, inefficient, and actually unsafe and unhealthy in many places, the scope widened a lot. In addition to creating a safe and healthy environment, our goal was also to have the exterior of our building reflect who we are as a church on the inside, our extravagantly welcoming church, our little church with a heart in the heart of Hingham. So it was easy to add a rainbow to our sign, but not so easy to make a visual statement in some of the other areas where we wanted to be visually more welcoming. In order to build a handicapped ramp, for example, we needed town approvals and lots of money. So we designed a ramp and went before the Historic Commission and the Conserv uh, Community Preservation Committee, who both supported our plans. Then we went to work looking at the rest of the building and grounds and realized that a large scale renovation was necessary and that we were going to need lots more money. So we hired Raymond Design Associates to help us with the architectural plans and Acela Construction Management to help us implement them. Concurrently, we conducted a campaign we affectionately called the Believe Campaign to raise the funds because we truly believe that we can make this happen. We successfully raised most of the money ourselves and because much of the work we do here at HCC is mission related, part of our capital campaign funds went toward an outreach component. In addition, we received a small grant from the Community Preservation Committee for our handicapped ramp, which we are very appreciative of. But we do need to raise more funds to reach our goals and we will appreciate any and all community support to keep this building in good shape. We're not looking to be state of the art here. We're only looking to maintain this historic building responsibly and bring it up to date to create better spaces to support our ministries, our missions, our programs, our outreach and community work, and to make sure the kitchen and other facilities and infrastructure are healthy and safe for all of those who use our church. And many organizations do use our church. We're hoping that the impact of this renovation and renewal will benefit the next generation and generations to come of not only churchgoers, but to all those in our community at large. And I look forward to cutting a ribbon together with all of you uh, in spring of 2017 when the project is finished. 
And so now with these shovels, when we are ready, we will break ground. Thank you very much. I'd like to welcome to the podium Diana Van Etten, who will make comments on behalf of Acela, our construction partners. Welcome. <laughs> Good afternoon, good evening. Thank you all so much for being here. My name is Diana Van Etten and I'm with Acela Construction Managers. Um, I want to offer on behalf of Acela our very heartfelt thanks to our client and also our, new, our newest friend in the town of Hingham, the Hingham Congregational Church. So thank you so much for choosing Acela for this very important and meaningful project for the community. I'd especially like to thank um, the Hingham Congregational, the Building and Grounds Task Force, Kathy Blair, my very dear friend, Roger Hoyt, Norm Lamond is not here today, and Michael Sardina. Um, our design partners, also Jean Raymond, uh, Steve Lamoth, and John Bartecki with uh, Raymond Design Associates. And I would like to thank very much the Hingham Community Preservation Committee for their contribution to this project. Um, our very good friends at the Hingham Historical Society, Mark Cullings, um, you know, I, I know that it is because of the work that we're doing, um, a very significant part of the reason why we were chosen for this project was our, you know, our great work for Hingham Historical and your support. Um, so I'm very, I'm very thankful, and Acela is very thankful for the, for your support. Um, I would also like to thank everyone, the board of directors, um, and um, our, also our public relations firm is here, Colleen Cremini. Um, they've done a great job in helping on a short time frame to help generate some, some publicity and and some community support for the project. Um, also here today are um, Patrick O'Connor, our newly elected state senator. Thank you so much, Patrick, for being here. Paul, thank you very much for being here as well. Paul Gannon, our selectman. Um, I, I believe that cultural, historic, um, sacred and spiritual spaces are an endangered species. Many of New England's churches are threatened by shrinking congregations and high maintenance costs and some have been damaged by insensitive additions or inappropriate materials, while others have been decommissioned and converted to other uses. Uh, religious spiritual spaces are truly part of the fabric and the foundation of our history and our heritage. Yet historic churches are some of New England's most fragile structures. It is very important that we take the, that we preserve the infrastructure and the foundation of our community, because if we don't, we can't hope to build a vibrant future for our town and for our region. Acela's mission is to truly build better. Building better means really listening to our clients and understanding their hopes and their dreams and their goals, and working together as a project team to ensure that nonprofit organizations and cultural, educational, and religious institutions that have limited budgets can really cost effectively realize project goals and carry out their mission. And more importantly, building better means building true, authentic, meaningful connections, lasting relationships, and true friendships with our clients. We genuinely believe that projects like these for Hingham Congregational Church and for our soon to be completed work at Old Derby Academy and the Hingham Heritage Museum that together we are truly building better for Hingham and for the South Shore and our shared communities. So thank you very much for being here today to celebrate this beautiful survivor in our New England landscape and to honor this congregation for its service to our community and creating a more welcoming and spiritual experience for all. Acela is very proud to be part of Hingham's heritage and Hingham's future. We're grateful to the community and for the leadership that values and supports the importance of our history and our heritage and the preservation of our spiritual homes. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Diana. I love what you said about relationships. I mean, buildings really only matter because of the relationships that are nurtured within them and the mission that uh, springs forth because of them. So thank you for saying that. Uh, we do have some dignitaries here with us today. Uh, Senator O'Connor, would you like to say a few words? Uh, thank you. Uh, as, as has been said, I'm the newly elected state senator for Hingham. I've been in office almost two months now, but I'm very familiar with Hingham Congregational Church. Uh, just driving through the district, it's very hard to miss uh, being in such a great location. Uh, I want to thank you all for the invitation to be here today, especially today as we celebrate with music and laughter and, and love and faith and shared values uh, for the progress that's going to happen here at Hingham Congregational Church. I'm so excited to take part in this. Uh, this is an excellent gathering of members of the community. Uh, just hearing about the, the congregation itself, uh, raising the funds for the capital campaign that uh, Phil uh, put on is, is very impressive and uh, unique in a lot of circumstances around uh, Massachusetts and throughout really the world when it comes to uh, construction capital projects at, at faith-based initiatives. So I wanted to thank you all, congratulate you all. I look forward to driving by and seeing the progress on a, on a hopefully daily basis. And I, I, I hope to be here again in the, uh, in the spring to, uh, to cut the ribbon. So congratulations to all of you. This is, this is really something else. Thank you. Well, Ben Gannon, would you like to make a few comments? Love to have you address us. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'll be brief. I just want to uh, congratulate everybody in the community and especially in the uh, congregation community for the, all the efforts that you put together. I was standing with my friend Mark Culling and the Historical Society. The, uh, the work that they do, it doesn't, it doesn't happen by accident. It's a cooperative effort. Asella has been doing a fantastic job. I know we worked with them on the projects. I want to welcome Senator O'Connor here. Um, one of the best times that I've spent as an elected official actually was in a capacity on the CPC. You know, the first time I was involved in the decision making projects like this, we're able to f put money together to fund projects to preserve uh, this building and many others. So, uh, you know, one of the happiest moments I had is sitting over last year with that committee. They deserve a lot of credit as well. But I'm, I'm happy to be here as an elected official, but also as a resident of Hingham joining in this, this uh, joyous moment. And I look forward to the completion in the spring in the ribbon cutting. Be here with you again. Thank you very much. We're way ahead of schedule, so I don't know if Gene wants to say, let's say something, Gene, to say hi. We're happy to be your partner, Gene. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you all for, uh, for what you've said. I guess we're going to do some shoveling now. Shoveling. Shoveling, praying, then music, then singing. Now let's get a construction guy up here. Come on. <laughs> Debbie, come on. Phil. Oh, break, break the code. <laughs> Thank you. You don't want to, hear, you don't want to hurt yourself, Pat. Yes, it does. Very good. One, three. Bravo! Yay! <laughs>
I'm incredibly, incredibly grateful that our church is and will be a church for many years to come. The church next door is now a house. I'm glad that we're going to be a church for a long time to come. Thank you all once again for coming to acknowledge and celebrate this important moment in our church's life. Will you please pray with me? Loving and life-giving God, we thank you for gathering us as a community of faith. We thank you for the 170 years you have given us together. In that time, we have grown spiritually within and also turned outward to serve and advocate for our neighbors in an effort to reflect the teachings of Jesus. We pray for our own congregation as we plan for the future, and we pray for our entire community and our nation as we seek to discern your will for us. Please heal those who are brokenhearted over the recent violence and help us to know what we can do to make the world a more peaceful and loving place. In the spirit of Jesus, I pray. Amen. This means the show is almost over. We need your support. I'm going to sing a song that you all know. A little uh, in my thought, but what song are we going to sing to make this all come together? This grand old lady is being rehabbed and refurbished, and it's just a wonderful feeling. There's some songs I'm going to present to you now. When the Red Red Robin goes bob, bob, bobbing along. How many know this? Okay, I'm looking over a four-leaf clover. Yeah, all right. Try a little tenderness. All right, and the song we're going to sing. So Side by Side was written by the guy who wrote all these songs. And his name is Harry M. Woods. He lived right around here. He went to Harvard. He lived in Pembroke and he lived on the Cape. So, you know this song. You ain't got a barrel of money. <laughs> and uh, sing the along last, with us. The last uh, word of travel along, singing a song side by side. So maybe uh, we do a little hand holding, a little like put your arm around the person next to you. But this is good. This is a good time. Here we go. Relationships. Yes. Here we go. Oh, we ain't got a barrel of money. Maybe we're ragging and funny, but we travel along and singing a song side by side. Oh, we don't go as common to Maybe it's trouble. Maybe it's trouble and but we'll travel the road. But we'll travel the road, sharing the load side by side. Through all kinds what if the of weather, sky should fall? But what if the sky should fall? Just as long as we're just as long as we're it doesn't matter at all. It doesn't matter at all. It doesn't matter at all. When we all have their quarrels and pardon. We'll be the same as we started. Just traveling along, singing our song. Side by side. Side. 